Hi, we're Salvador Dali, and welcome to Space Art for Space Week. Actually, I'm Danielle from Black Rock Castle Observatory, and this is Donna. But we look a lot like Salvador Dali, don't we? <laughs> of course, this is what we're going to be doing today. We're actually going to be using Salvador Dali mm -hmm. and his painting, which is The Persistence of Memory. And we are going to be um, showing you how to craft a bit, like how Dali would have painted. And um, we might keep the mustaches, we might not. <laughs> I'd say maybe not, because like I'm already starting to sneeze. Like, <laughs> I'm a fan of Dali, I like his paintings, and you obviously are too. Huge fan of Dali. Huge fan. Yeah. And we have picked a very specific piece of work, because he's got a lot of different artworks out there, but we picked very, something very specific because it relates to space in a way. Right, Donna? Right. So what did we pick? Tell us a little bit about it. So the picture that we picked is The Persistence of Memory by Dali. This is just a pencil drawing of it. Oh my God, you got a Dali painting. Gorgeous. Dali Dali Not Dali only Dali. is it an original, it's also upside down. <laughs> so this is a picture of the painting that we're talking about and it was basically a landscape painting um, of a beach, a kind of a sea scene in Catalonia where Salvador Dali grew up um, with dreamlike clocks in it. So Dali was part of a movement called Surrealism mm. in art and Surrealism meant that he drew paintings that he would see in his dreams. So he used to take dreamlike objects that would be all distorted and, you know, funny, like when you're dreaming and you dream, your dream isn't quite reality. I had very weird dreams last night. I have very, do you have like, when you dream, can you, is it really vivid? Like, is it, mine's really detailed mm -hmm. and it's got like a story and it kind of like goes all over the place and then it kind of comes back and it kind of makes no sense and then it makes sense mm -hmm. and it's kind of all over the place. I think mine are more like places, like I'd be in my house, but it's not really my house, you know? It's, yes. And then when you wake up, you realize it wasn't. Yeah. But Dali used to dream about clocks, obviously. So he time and he was very interested in time and how time was taken up and how society worked with time and everything was to, schedule, to a schedule. So I think in his dreams, there was less time. So it was, he had the clocks melting and distorted under the hot sun mm. um, but the landscape still remained really realistic so it was like the idea of having dreamlike objects in a realistic setting that's really similar to my dreams actually <laughs> i really feel like the she background <laughs> is really i don't have weird dreams where i'm like bouncing around on flowers and stuff it's like realistic places like last my last night I was dreaming about a place I've been to before a million times, but then it was in another country and the people in the dreams shouldn't have been there. So, you know, it's like those kind of things that are abstract in, mm -hmm. so the background is realistic, but then everything else is a bit abstract about it. Mm -hmm. So very similar to, yeah, I guess, you should try and paint a painting. I probably should paint a painting. <laughs> so this year for Space Week, the Space Week theme is space and climate. Mm -hmm. So. We are looking at some like, how do we um, maybe protect our climate and what can we do? And what, what can we do? Recycle. And so we decided this year, we're going to use a few objects that we have around the house or anything you have basically in your recycling bin um, and see if we can make some art that way. Okay. Yeah, so what did you come up with? So I came up, now I have used a couple of different materials just to give different ideas about what you can use if you have it lying around. Um, th this is basically the part that the clock goes on. It just looks like a box in the painting. So I covered a tissue box with some burn paper and sellotape and then this is where this clock goes. So this clock I have made out of mod uh, Model Magic it's called. It's the one I am using made by Creola. Um, it's really good uh, to work with. It kind of dries through a rubber texture. It's kind of like Play-Doh and Mala, the same kind of consistency when you're making something. So I also have Play-Doh here. So this one over here is made with Play-Doh. This is Model Magic Ooh. and this one is Paper Mache. Mm. So for the Paper Mache, I used tin foil. So I took some tin foil, crunched it up to the shape I wanted. So I'll take my So you make your kind of clock shape and then bend it. And then this is just a smaller version of what I did there. So I'm bending it this way 
and tinfoil is really easy to sculpt so you can just sculpt it into whatever shape you want and then you take some PVA glue and mix in a little bit of water so it's about um, two parts PVA glue to one part water and mix it all up till it's kind of liquidy but gooey and then you get some tissue paper and start putting that on top of your tin foil to make it hard so it'll make it really hard like this one and um, I will say with the paper mache it takes a while to dry so if you have a class and you do it with a class then I would think maybe do the paper mache on one day let it dry overnight and then paint it on the following day so you basically you can pull it off in strips as well and stick it on I'm using tissue paper here but you can also use newspaper or scraps of paper and um, so anything you can find in your recycling bin if you find like scraps of paper that aren't needed anymore and um, any kind of tissue paper kitchen roll will work you just soak it all in the glue and then you put on your next layer so you can tear it up smaller or you can just put it on as a hole there because the PVA glue will dry hard anyway so when that is hardened when you have a few layers of it on and it's hardened it will give you a kind of a rough texture like this and then you can paint over it so I made this one and then for the top part for the um, winder I just stuck on another piece of tin foil Mm. and went over that with paper mache so that is the paper mache again that is a little bit messier and a little bit longer because it takes long to dry, uh, while to dry and um, the play-doh ones and the model logic ones are quite quick so with the model magic i have sticky fingers on it. <laughs> i just basically make out the shape so you flatten it out make out your shape of your clock and you come up with something like this and then I have made this beforehand so I just flattened out a piece of white and you can stick that on top and then pull the frame of the clock around the sides like this oh yeah and just keep messing around with it and sculpting it until you have the shape you want it doesn't really matter because Dali's clocks were so distorted some of them he did a series of different paintings with um clocks and sculptures as well and some of them are really distorted like they almost look like they're dripping from the end so it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can make it as kind of drippy as you want it. And when I was finished, this one and this one, I used a felt tip pen just to draw on the numbers Ooh. and the hands of the clock. You could also use, which I didn't have, so I didn't, if you had a little button or something like that, if you found little buttons or little scraps or even a little bit of tinfoil rolled up into a wall, you could use that as the center of the clock. You could use little toothpicks as the hands of the clock. So you can use as many kind of materials as you want on it. Um, there's no rules. So, <laughs> this is, uh, so basically then the last thing I did was I made this tree. This is in the picture as well. Um, I pulled a few twigs off the trees outside the castle here. And I literally just stuck them together to make kind of a tree shape in the painting it's kind of like this shape so I tried to reconstruct that as much as I could so you stick them together I use some twine and just wrapped it around them so then you can paint the twine to make it look like the bark of the tree if you want to um, catch it here so just and you can kind of manipulate them in whatever way you want So once you have them kind of stuck together a little bit, you could, for example, break this one to make it look kind of sticky. Oh, yeah. You hang a clock on it. You can also wrap twine around there. I find the twine is really, it's handy to work with because it's so easy. If you don't have twigs from a tree, you can use um, like wooden skewers or you can even use pipe cleaners. So a pipe cleaner would be actually cool. So this is a pipe cleaner. So if you had one or two pipe cleaners, you could make the shape of your tree like that. It wouldn't be as strong, so maybe you might need to put one or two together, like twist them around each other to make it strong enough to hold. Mm. That would have to be a small one. So, but twigs or anything, if you can come up with anything else that you think would make a good tree, then, I mean, there's so many things. This was just all that was in my um, garden slash recycling bin. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that's... A tree and then I just stuck it into a little bit of play-doh at the end just to make it stand it's also sell it 
<laughs> Very so good. That's basically it. This one also is made from a mala. So mala is kind of harder to work with than the mala magic or the play doh, but it can also make a nice kind of a curtains. So it can make a nice clock shape. And that's another mala magic one. So there we go. There you go. Very good. So you can mix and match all your materials. You can kind of choose what you'd like to do. Mm -hmm. um, for the clocks, it's quite interesting. It is said that Dali was inspired by space-time to paint his now-famous melted clocks. This is because it would be similar to how the universe actually is. Space is not flat. It's actually more like the fabric on a trampoline when you stand on it. It curves. The fabric of space-time gets warped and curves around large objects like planets. The more mass the object has, the more the curving occurs. And so the more gravity we experience. This bending and curving of space affects time as well. The more it curves, the slower time becomes. Earth has a lot of gravity, but when we move away from Earth, time will speed up as you experience less gravity. From your place in space, it will appear that the time on Earth is moving slower. This is something we have to consider when sending satellites into space. Satellites are at different distances from Earth. The clock on satellites closer to Earth will move more slowly because they experience more gravity and the clocks on the satellites further away will run faster because they experience less gravity. Time is a funny thing. Not only is it changed by gravity, but it is also affected by speed. The faster the object moves, the more time slows down. The International Space Station is carrying astronauts 400 kilometers above Earth's surface. That seems pretty far from Earth. And from what we just learned, if we're farther away from Earth's gravity, then time should be moving faster. But the ISS moves very fast. 28,000 kilometers per hour. That's really, really fast. And so fast that the time on the ISS actually slows down even though it's far from Earth. So something we have to keep in mind is that as people start traveling in space, the times that we experience will all be different depending on where we are and how fast we're moving. Time is a funny thing, just like Dolly's clocks. And it makes sense that someone would make the connection between Dolly's curved timepieces and the curve of space-time. But when asked about his inspiration, Dolly confirmed that his clocks were actually inspired by cheese melting in the sun. Even so, let's be inspired, and let's build an international space station with its warped time in honor of Dolly's warped clocks. So time is a big part of space. And especially if we're going to be living up in space, which we already are. There are astronauts up there right now on the International Space Station. So we thought, well, why don't we build an International Space Station? Because we've got a resource on the Space Week website that shows you how to build an International Space Station from recycled materials. So I have a few things here that... Um, we're just in the bin, in the recycling bin. And you can use your own versions as well. I've got a few bottles here and a can and some kitchen foil and some uh, tape. So we're going to see if I can build. Can I steal some of your tree sticks? Oh, of course. Cool. Do you have another? What do I see over there? Like a skewer or something? That might come in handy. Thanks. So I'm going to... How much oh! Load the tin foil on this box. <laughs> so we're going to use um, a few of the bottles and cans for the modules. Then we have the solar panels, which we are going to use tin foil for. And then we have radiators, which we're going to use some paper for. So let's uh, build. Let's build a whole station. So I think we'll start off with. Uh, uh, okay. I'm thinking maybe can in the middle. I think we kind of looked at this before. I think we had, these two are very similar. So we might have those as modules like that. Mm -hmm. Then maybe a can in the middle. And then, is that right? Oh no, we did these two, yeah. didn't we? Them two, and then the can at the top. And then the can at the top, the top. yeah. So we're gonna stick these all together. I think I'm gonna put, can I have this stick? Yeah. Put this one in here like this. Put this one in here like this. And then put these two, put them like that. And then tape them. Mm -hmm. Boom. 
Now, the trick is going to be, how do we get the can to stick? Tape. Tape it all up. Do that. Oh, wrapping it in tin foil. Very good, very good. Now, it's here. Get a bit of tape. Maybe. Are you serious? You can do it. <laughs> oh, not so easy, is it? <laughs> it's a trick tape. Did you get it? No. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Yeah, very good. Okay. So I'm just going to, I think I'm going to go across the sticks. And then it's kind of working. It's a bit tricky. Yeah. yeah. It's actually working pretty good. No, I actually probably should have probably should have put the sticks together too. Oh no! Module down! <laughs> Astronauts are flying into space as we speak. Don't use your teeth for tools. My uncle was a dentist. That was his rule. <laughs> Did you say he sounds scary? <laughs> okay. That's, that actually is great. Okay, so we've got our modules here of the International Space Station. And now we're going to do the, um, what did I say? Solar panels. So we will, that's actually great, Donna. It's a good job. So make some flat strips of tin foil and we will put them on the ends of, let's see, which end is gone. It's actually the shorter end, these ends here. Mm -hmm. Come on there. What you could do as well is if you have time, you could paper mache the whole lot of it and it would make it nice and solid. Oh, like after you're done building this, yeah. then paper, oh, that'd be really cool. Oh, Donna's always coming up with good ideas. <laughs> so I'm just gonna actually stick a little bit of this on here. And put the solar panels on here. They're gonna need power, so that's why these solar panels are so important. And I'm just gonna stick that on there like that. Boom. Lovely. Oh no, we lost it again. <laughs> I think I found it. I think it's there, isn't it? Don't know if we need that much, but it'll work. It will work. So with the tinfoil, tinfoil is actually really good to work with. If you're making stuff. Yeah? Yeah. It's really Why? What I, like, even with the panels, they're a bit thicker because I'm just folding them over and they're really, they're kind of more sturdy than paper. Okay. Um, do I need panels for the back? I think I do. Panels yeah, for... one here. This one. Bam. Oh, no, do you need they're like, they kind of doubled up. Yeah. So like, do we have a little... A little thing to go in between because they're kind of like this. Oh, I'll tell you what you can Oh, bottle caps. Okay. See, this is so much fun. Do you want okay. to glue them? Sure. Will that stick with the on It'll the take tin? a while to dry this thing with PVA, but if you have a glue that will dry quicker, right, then so if you glue that part on. Oh, maybe put this this way. There you go. Okay. 
we'll and then let's put it in here. Give me a little edge. Beautiful. So there's our solar panels. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. This is so good. Okay. And now, okay, well now that we glued this, it's, it is taking a bit of time to actually hold. So it's moving around a little bit. Mm -hmm. So actually, you know, you could have even used like Play-Doh or anything. Oh, yeah. Stick that in. Um, so off the bottom, that's where we have the radiators. And we're going to Yes. Now they get kind of crinkled. Probably should cut it the other way. So we'll cut some strips of paper like this, and then we are going to fold them like a little accordion. So back and forth. And back and forth, and back and forth, mm. so that they're crinkled like this. How lovely is that? Oh, nice <laughs> oh, Donna. Now I'm going to have a lopsided International Space Station. <laughs> and then those go on the end. But I'm not going to lift it right now because that's going to take a while to, to hold. So those will go on the bottom there. And I'd say we made a pretty good international space station so once that's all dry put this on the bottom and then if you have the space you can take a bit of um what did you call this twine oh I, that's what i was gonna say but i don't know why i thought it was something else like <laughs> twine um and then stick it around the middle here and then you can hang it from your ceiling and then you've got a nice floating international space station floating out in space so um, any fun facts you'd like to give us about Dali? Okay, so Dali was really interesting. He was a really interesting character. And he kind of, the way that his um, paintings were surreal, so was his personality and his sense of style. So he was really well known for almost more so than his paintings for, for some periods in history. Really well known for his... Um, his eccentric style so he would do things like he he was really influ influenced by dandyism which was a period back in 19 early 1900s and so he used to wear these wide brim hats and capes and he'd have a cane and he was very he they kind of used to describe him as grand so he like liked grandeur oh. and he liked looking different and standing out so he was well known for that and of course he used to do things like I think he wore a deep diving suit to an exhibition one time and he almost suffocated because it was it was too like enclosed for him. Um, so there was lots of wacky kind of things he did. He wore a lobster on his head another time and he just liked to stand out and he liked people to be talking about him. Um, you know, he his style was very similar to his painting, so it was kind of wacky and out there and surreal. Damn. So yeah, that's what I liked most about him. And of course he had that mustache oh uh, yeah classic yeah that's how he's renowned like if you just see the mustache you think of Dali straight away and um, he some people say that his mustache used to be influenced by his clocks so he would have the it sticking up but sometimes it was in different directions so people say that it could have been to represent his clocks and how he felt about time that's pretty cool that's a good one so really the message is dare to be different. Dare to be different. Just in life, how you are, but also when you're coming up with your art project. Yep. Use whatever you've got around and uh, see if you can find some fun stuff at home or in just in the bin that you were going to throw out and see if you can make a masterpiece out of it like Dolly. Yep. I think it's a great idea. Well, I had a lot of fun doing this. Did you enjoy this? I really enjoyed this. <laughs> well, we hope that you enjoy all of Space Week. Go check out the um, Space Week website for more events and you might have something near you. And we really, thanks for, we really appreciate you just joining in and thanks for uh, participating in another year of Space Art. Thank you. And if you do make any of your own works of art that are inspired by Dali or inspired by what we've done here, 
please, please upload them or send them to us and we will upload them onto our website. We're going to have a little gallery on the website. Absolutely. Um, especially for Space Week and all of the art projects that you sent in to us. Yeah. So be surreal. And yeah. Get creative. creative. Exactly. Come up with something new. We want to see what you come up with. That's the fun bit. So thanks so much and we will see you next year. Bye. Bye. Thank you.